Okay guys, so this is actually totally impromptu. We are in Walmart tonight and I went through the floral section and they have a bunch of new summer florals out and it totally inspired me to do a Walmart summer DIY video. So I am gonna show you guys the stuff that I'm going to pick up and we're gonna do some DIYs. So let's jump right into today's video. Okay guys, we're gonna start off with this rustic wood round. Now, my husband could cut me a piece like this. However, I know that not everybody has that luxury or has the ability to get a piece cut like this. It also takes a little bit for them to dry out and then you have to sand it down. It's a whole process. It's not just cut it and DIY on it. So I thought that seven bucks was a pretty fair price for a natural, real piece of wood like this. So I picked it up, took it out of the package, and then I designed this free printable for you guys, which you can find in the description box below, as well as two other ones that you will see throughout this video. So we are taking it back old school a little bit, and we're gonna pull out the graphite paper, and I am just going to trace on the parts that I can basically, because this is round, and my paper is almost like a rectangle. Um, I did have to kind of crinkle it over the edges, if that makes sense. That way I could see where to stop drawing. Next, once I was done tracing all my wording and like the honeycombs and the design on, then I go in with my black paint pen and I just go over all of where I traced on. Now to give this a little color and some dimension, I took some antique gold rub and buff that you can find linked in the description box below in my Amazon store. And now I'm not gonna lie you guys, this is not the easiest to paint with. This is more of like rubbing it on figurines and um, things of that nature. It's not so much to paint with, but if you just have a little bit of patience, you can make it work. Now, um, I do have a different gold. I just didn't like the way that it looked, so that's why I went with this. Um, but you can use whatever color you like. Maybe you like yellow better than gold. Um, I wanted mine to look more vintage if you will so that's why I went with this color but once again it's your personal preference once I was done filling in the bee's body then I just went around the letters and the honeycombs and I just wanted to once again give it a little bit of dimension and make all those words pop and um, I also did like extra swirls in where the black was again i just wanted to tie it all together so i just let this play and i sped it up that way if you want to make this like exactly how i did it then you can see exactly how i did the embellishments Last but not least, to protect and seal this off, I took some triple thick crystal clear glaze and I gave it two good coats and literally that was it, you guys. Look how gorgeous this came out. I'm absolutely in love with it. This is, again, a theme that is out of my comfort zone, but you guys asked me to do it and since I was uh, you know inspired to do it. I thought that this would be a really good idea So let me know in the comments what you guys think Walmart has these gorgeous charcuterie boards cutting boards whatever you like to call them and they're at a really a affordable price per usual. Melissa can't talk. Um, I felt like $5.97 was an amazing price, especially for how high prices are right now for wood. So I 
got both of them. Right now we're gonna do the wider one. I took it home, took my blow dryer to heat up that sticker on both sides, and then I removed that sticker, sanded it down, and then vacuumed up the excess. For the first side, I used my Dixie Bell Voodoo Stain. Um, you can find that on Dixie Bell's website. I'm not sure the exact names. I know that this one, this one's the black one. The one before is brown, um, but I don't know the exact terms. I can find that out for you. Um, but I did either side, black and brown, and then I dried it with my blow dryer. Next, I'm gonna go in with this Oh Honey transfer. I don't even know if that's the name of the transfer, but I looked on the website. Unfortunately, it's not available anymore, and I didn't realize that until after filming this video, so I do apologize about that. But all I did was take the honeycomb part, and on the black side, I transferred that on with my gold paste, peeled and revealed that gorgeous crisp image that's what i love most about chalk couture is how super easy it is if one thing i learned throughout this video is that i remember why i switched to using chalk couture so much um using that graphite paper and then going over all that wording is a lot of work but i do love the results of it so it's kind of like you know give and take so anyway moving on to the other side i take that same honeycomb transfer and i kind of flip it the other way and then take some dune chalk paste as well as some gold chalk paste and kind of randomly put dabs of each color around where i'm transferring on then i just squeegee it off peel and reveal once again that gorgeous crisp image and i love mixing the colors i just love the way it looks and then i also transferred on oh honey to the bottom corner um dried that as well and then to finish this side off i took my little b and transferred him on with my black paste and look how gorgeous that is. I love the way that turned out and I loved it so much that I had to flip it over and transfer on that B with my dune on the back side. Once that was finished and dried, then once again I hit it with my triple thick clear glaze, say that 10 times fast, and look how gorgeous these are, you guys. I'm always so stunned when I step outside of my comfort zone because I actually end up loving every single thing that I make. So I know you guys will let me know what you think as usual in the comments down below once you see all the projects. Moving on to this wood palette sign, it was only four dollars and fifty-eight cents, which once again, th one, which once again, I thought was a great price because this is an actually pretty big sign. So what I did was take that same Dixie Belle Voodoo Brown stain and I stained each of the sides with my brown and then once that was finished i went in on one of the sides with the black stain um, just making sure that there's a nice even coat and then wiping off the excess if you want a darker color then you can just do a second third etc layer um, but i liked the way that it looked so i left it and then for that fourth one all i did was take the brushes that i used for the stain and I just kind of dry brushed a little bit of both colors on that plain board. I also took some of the black and blend, blended that in with the brown and vice versa. And then for that blank palette, the fourth one, I took some Mod Podge and that same brush and just kind of blended all of those colors again or together. And then I hit it with my blow dryer to dry it quickly. 
So I set that aside and we're gonna work on the wreath. Now I got these florals from Walmart for $3.47 per bunch. Those big yellow flowers, they're beautiful, but I did not realize until I got home that they were $3.47 a piece themselves. So I definitely don't recommend to pick those up, but I do recommend, however, these bunches that Walmart has. They're always so full, so realistic looking, and I just think that you get a really good bang for your buck with Walmart florals. So um, that is why I use this but I went in with both of them and just randomly um, put you know the florals around the wreath going in the same direction just tucking them into the wreath and then once I was satisfied with the way that it looked then I glued that down to our palette sign Next, I'm gonna go in with this Happy Easter sign from Dollar Tree, just the part of the sign that hangs from the truck, sand down those edges, and then I used my new Sandstone Waverly paint from Walmart, and I gave this a distressed coat. Once that was dry, then I went in with my Arteza Gold paint, and I just distressed that just to tie all the colors in. Now there are several uses for the free printables that I'm gonna put down in the description box for you. And this is one that I came up with. So for the wreath, I needed something to tie in the whole theme. So all I did was transfer on some of those honeycombs to either side of each corner. So at the bottom, and then the other side I did it at the top and then I cut out the word fresh honey the words fresh honey and I transferred those on and then went over those with my black paint pen as well A little tip I wanted to give you guys is before you pull up your graphite paper and you think, oh, I've traced it all, I'm all done, make sure that you hold part of it, pull up your graphite paper, that way you can see what you just transferred on. That way if there's any parts that you missed, you can quickly just go over your lines before you pull it up, that way you save the hassle of trying to line it up and go over that once again. Now, I do not know how I lost the footage, but my camera has been doing some weird stuff where it just shuts off on its own. But thankfully, I always have another phone running. So all I did, you guys, was glue this middle sign to the wreath, and then I glued a flower to the front, and this little bee was a very, very last minute add-on that I just figured looked really cute. And that was it, you guys. Look how gorgeous this turned out. Let me know what you think. Okay, guys, let's do the tall charcuterie board now. Once again, I used my blow dryer to remove the stickers, and then I just sanded down that sticker residue and vacuumed up the excess. Then here is another free printable that we're going to use. So all I did was design my free printables on Canva. I printed them out after I made sure that the sizing was correct. And then once again, I just took my graphite paper and I traced that on. Now originally I was really loving the way that the pencil looked so I went ahead and I colored in all of the lettering and I went over the beehive once again with the pencil and then I was just gonna hit it with a clear coat and be done. However, 
While I flip this over and use these rub-on transfers from Dollar Tree on the back side, I just wanted this to be just like a simple, super easy DIY for this back side. So I just took that rub-on transfer and transfer transferred on the B with the greenery around it in the right hand corner and then that was it for that side so while I was doing this I was deciding what am I going to do on the back side and ultimately I just went over it with some black paint pen and then I went in on the beehive with my Arteza gold paint. Next, I went in with a really tiny brush and then once again, I just gave the wording some dimension, just giving them some highlight around each letter. Once again, to protect these and make sure that they last a really long time, I went outside and took my triple thick clear glaze and I gave each side two really good coats. And look how absolutely gorgeous these came out. Just by a little bit of patience and some love, you can make things look so high end that I would definitely pick this up in any store. Okay, you guys, that video was supposed to be over after that last DIY. However, we had went to Walmart again after the initial filming of that first clip, and I saw these crates and immediately an idea sparked in my brain. So I picked up one of these crates from Walmart, and then I went to my craft room and took some pieces of poplar that I've had in my stash for a while before all the prices went sky high. I believe I paid like three bucks a piece for one of these. And I just kind of eyeballed how tall I want my awning to be. And then I marked it and took my favorite saw and just cut that down. Once that was cut, then I measured the second piece, cut that piece down as well. Once those were done, then I took my wood glue and I love this new wood glue. It is the I forget what it's called. It's a lot thicker. It is by Gorilla Glue. I think it's like Gorilla Glue Max or something. I don't know. Don't quote me. But anyway, this stuff holds really, really well. But I wanted to be able to work on this right away. So I did use a combination of wood glue and hot glue. And then I glued both of my pieces to the inside on either side. I then took these galvanized pieces from Dollar Tree, I took the tags off of them, and then I just kind of eyeballed them together and held them up to my little project to see, you know, where I needed to glue them. And then once I was satisfied with the sizing, then I took my super glue by Gorilla, I believe as well. I love Gorilla brand. Anybody else let me know in the comments, but I glue those awning or the galvanized pieces together and then we're going to measure the side pieces to hold up our awning. So all I did was take my square dowels that you can also find in my Amazon shop in the description box below and I just kind of measure how long I think I'm gonna need them, cut those off, and then once I had them cut, then I could hold it up and correctly get the right size. I did need to cut a little bit off of there. So I tried to use my miter shears, but I'm not a really big fan of these for certain things. They only cut like really small dowels nicely. Other than that, I'm not really too impressed. 
but I all I did was take a combination of wood glue and hot glue on the end of my dowel and I glued that down to the outer edge of the right hand side of that poplar and then I repeated the same step for the left hand side. Now the only reason I glued it was so that way I could drill a hole because I want these to be nice and sturdy. I'm going to put a wood screw on either side. Um, as you could see the right side fell right off because glue just doesn't hold as well. Um, definitely not as good as a screw. So I just drilled my holes and then I went in with a scroll with a screw good lord and i made sure that these were not going to go anywhere next i go in with my awning and i do the exact same thing the holes on this actually benefited me so on the top pieces i just once again pre-drilled my holes and then i screwed that down with little tiny screws Next, we're gonna make jars of honey. So all I did was take these jars from Dollar Tree. Now, I specifically chose these because they reminded me of like honeycombs or I don't know, it just reminded me of this bee themed. So I gave it two good coats of my Fluff Dixie Belle chalk paint on both of my jars. On one of the jars, I wanted this to be like an open honey pot. So all I did was stuff some paper towels down into my jar. And then right at the top, I left a little bit exposed, not much, but I did want this to look realistic. So I just went in with some hot glue over top of those paper towels and I just kind of pulled it all in there. Now it did take up two glue sticks, which um, yeah, it's wasteful, but it's part of the project, right? So it is what it is. It doesn't bother me any. But once I was done filling in that top part, then I went around the edges and just kind of let that hot glue drip down um, naturally. I then put the lid on the second one and then for this one it was a little bit more tricky because I couldn't go from the top edge. Um, it kind of didn't want to fall down on its own. So I did just have to kind of help along the drips which in the end would it have looked better on a different jar? Yes, but I still absolutely love the way that it turned out. So I know you guys will let me know what you think. Do you think that these drips look realistic or do you think I should have went with a different jar? To fill in that honey, all I did was go in with my Arteza gold paint that we distressed that little sign on the wreath with earlier. And the trick with this is, at first I was like, oh boy, this is not gonna work. This acrylic is not gonna stick to this hot glue. But you just wanna go in with a really thin layer of this acrylic paint. And then once that dries really good, then you're able to go in and fill that in and give it a really nice coat. So I just did that for both of the faux honey on either jar. Next, I go in with these free printables. This is the third one that I created for you guys. And you can size these up or down. So if you wanna make a huge label, you can. If you wanna make it even smaller, you totally can. So check the description box once again. Like I said, also, if you guys um, want any ketone info, check the description box below as well. Add me on Facebook and just say ketones. Also, if you guys didn't know, you can also um, join the biz with me. So let me know as well. Um, I can, you can make money doing this. I know times are really crazy right now. And um, I did just want to mention that. So 
hit me up, let me know. But anyway, I created these free printables for you guys. Oh, and to mention, the ketones is how I lost all my weight. Everybody kept asking me about it, so I figured that now was the time to start sharing because I want to help you guys feel as good as I do. So anyway, I took my free um, labels. I cut them out and then I took a piece of cardboard and used my disappearing purple um, liquid spray, glue stick spray. And then I just glued those down and cut those out. And then I glued those to the front of my honey pots. And look how cute they are. So to finish this project off, I wanted to make a cute little banner for the front of our little honey stand. So all I did was take some burlap and cut out some um, triangles for our banner. And then I also found this bee fabric in my stash from Dollar Tree that I totally forgot about from either last haul or the haul before that. And I could not wait to use it. So I just used the burlap as a template and then cut out a few more banner pieces with the B fabric. Once I had all my pieces cut, then I took this white jute that I got from Walmart and I just started by gluing my little fabric pieces down. Now there was no perfect way to do this. I just took a piece of wax or parchment paper this is actually. And I figured out that I could actually glue each end down. That way it was nice and taut. That way I could easily glue my pieces down without having to fight with it and then this was so easy to put together you guys once i was finished all i did was take it over to my or i should say i took my honey stand over to my banner and i just kind of measured it to make sure that it was the right size and then once i was satisfied with the way that it looked then i kind of just pinched those edges over the sides, glued it down, and then cut off the excess. And then that was it for this one, you guys. I feel like this was well worth the price. Look how absolutely gorgeous this turned out. I do think this is my favorite DIY from today's video. As always, I love to hear your opinions in the description box or in the comments. Yeah, let me know in the description box what you guys think. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this project and which project is your favorite. Now, again, I was going to stop here, but your girl just cannot stop. I had that um, fabric and I wanted to do another DIY really quickly. This one is so simple, you guys. All I did was take this round wood decor piece from Dollar Tree and I painted one side with my fluff Waverly, or I'm so used to saying Waverly, my fluff Dixie Belle paint, and then I also painted the edges with white as well. Once that was dry, then I went in with my Mod Podge and gave it a really good coat and laid that honeycomb, honeybee, whatever you would like to call it, fabric right over top of it. And then I cut it out and gave it another good coat of that Mod Podge on top of that fabric. While that was drying, or actually I, after that dried, I cut it out and then I took those free printable labels that are in the description box and I kind of sized them up a little bit. For the first one, I cut it down really closely to the wording. And then for the second one, I just cut around the edges. And then for the one that I cut very closely, all I did was Mod Podge that to the front of where the fabric was. And literally that was it for that side. Once it was dry, it looked so amazing. And then to finish this off, all I did was flip it over. I Mod Podge that second label onto it. And then to give it a little bit of flair and some dimension and some design, I, I don't know where the clip went. Again, my camera is really driving me nuts. Um, but look how gorgeous this looks, just that label with that fabric. I just love the way that that looked. Um, but 
again, moving on to this side, like I said, once I um, had that done, then I went in with my hot glue and just made some drips on the top and the bottom. And then I went in with my Arteza Gold, painted it, gave it some distressing on the natural wood parts, and I just absolutely, I absolutely love the way that this side turned out as well. So I always love to hear your comments. I love to hear what you guys think and which projects was your favorite. And I always love to encourage you guys of how amazing you are, how worthy you are, how special you are. And just know that anything you put your mind to, you are totally capable of. So with all that being said, don't forget to do all the youtube -y things if you enjoyed this video. It really helps my channel to grow and help YouTube to notice me a bit more. These videos are a lot of work, but I absolutely love putting them together for you guys, hanging out with you guys, and helping you guys make your home look gorgeous. So with all that being said, if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy, and I love you with all my heart and soul. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, share this out, subscribe if you haven't already, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.